from Peter. Hey everyone, I'm Jennifer, the VP Student Life for the SFSS. You pin my video, there you go. Um, and the SFSS, we're just um, the undergraduate student society of SFU, and we represent all of the undergraduate students. Um, we provide services like the health and dental insurance, health and dental plan, the UPASS, and of course we do fun events like these. Okay, so I'm gonna get started. I'm actually so excited. Um, ooh, let me just send the recipe again in the chat. Um, so now you'll have the recipe and you can make it anytime you want, even if you aren't trusted in the kitchen. All right. So the first thing is, okay, I all recipes tell you to preheat the oven, but I don't do that because it's kind of like a waste of energy in my opinion. So I just do that like midway through and then it preheats because I make things super slow. Um, I'm a slow baker, I guess. Um, so the first step is to take your flour, baking soda and salt and then like mix it with a fork in a bowl. So I'm going to do that right now. And then we mix it with a fork because it sifts the ingredients because I'm too lazy to get a sifter and those things are kind of hard to clean sometimes. So I might have the recipe because I don't think I want that many cookies. Um, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of math. All right, so it says two and a half cups of flour, which is one and a quarter cups, I think. And then I'm spooning it into the cup so that it sifts a little bit. I don't want it to be super packed. All right. Honestly, like I don't even care about measuring. As long as it's approximately the amount I want, I just do it and then it always turns out well for me. Okay, so that's one cup and one fourth. Baking has a lot more in common with science than I realized, like all the math that I have to do. Okay. And then one teaspoon of baking soda. Yeah, I actually don't know how much a teaspoon is. So let's just hope, <laughs> let's hope I get it right and that my cookies don't explode or anything. One teaspoon. Okay. Maybe a little bit more. Shoot, I was supposed to half it. Okay, whatever. I think it'll be fine. <laughs> um, let's let's hope it'll be okay. Um, okay, then we have one teaspoon or half a teaspoon of salt. But honestly, I really like salt, so I might put a little bit more. Ooh, somebody just came in the waiting room. Hello, welcome. Hey, so I just started um, with the first few steps right now. And please note that this workshop is being recorded. So if people from other time zones want to watch, they can. Um, but basically, we're just getting started right now. And since it's recording, um, if you don't want to be recorded, you can keep your camera and your mic off. And I'll also be checking the chat. So if you have a question, feel free to do so. Um, one of I know one of you aren't baking. Um, is anyone making anything alongside me right now? Okay, feel free to just put it in the chat. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just gonna talk about what I just did. So I added the flour, baking soda, and salt in a bowl, and now I'm mixing it with a fork. Ooh, somebody says, okay, not making it. That's okay, it's less stressful, um, and it's more chill when you like, watching somebody else make it because I remember going on vacation in Hawaii um, and we just spent all day watching the great British baking show or something and it was so fun but um, it looked kind of stressful too. Um, I could not, I would not, I cannot be like one of those bakers. They work so fast. Okay. Oh yeah. And then earlier I was saying that I bake super slow. So I never preheat the oven at the beginning. I preheat it in the middle just because I'm so slow. All right. So I combined all my dry ingredients. Now I'm going to put the vegan butter and the um, sugar in a bigger bowl. And this is my favorite part because it tastes so good. Like 
after I mix it all together, I'll literally just um, eat the vegan butter and the sugar mixture because it's delicious. So you'll need a hand mixer for this. Um, I'm not sure if, well, most, most people have one, so hopefully that's not a problem. Um, and I'm happy in the recipe because I don't want to have too many cookies. So it, in the recipe, it says one cup vegan butter. I'm going to do half a cup. Um, and if you're not vegan, you can use like regular butter. I just have this Basel vegan butter. Um, and then I'm going to spoon it into my measuring cup. Oh, we're out of spoons, so I will use a knife then. <laughs> All right. Another reason I can't be part of a baking show like on TV is because like my workstation is so messy. I literally don't even know where to put stuff. All right. As much as I like baking, sometimes I feel like it's better to have other people bake stuff for you <laughs> because I'm looking at how much butter I'm putting and it's like, this is not good. I think this is like half a cup. Um, I was also saying earlier that, oh, I found a spoon, by the way. Okay, I was saying earlier that it literally does not even matter to me what the measurement is, because I hate having to take out all the measuring cups and stuff and then having to measure them, because I'm lazy, so I just do whatever. And then it usually works out. I guess I'm lucky or great at estimating. Okay, now we need one and one quarter cups of brown sugar. And I'm happy in the recipe, so that's half a cup. What's half of a quarter? One eighth? Half and then an eighth? Okay. I really hope I did this math right. If anyone here is good at math, please confirm if half of one and a quarter cups is half and then one eighth. I think it is. Okay, I think this looks pretty good to me. Like I said, I'm not like a huge stickler for measurement and exact measurement. So now I just have my brown sugar and my vegan butter in the bowl. And this is this mixture literally tastes so good. And I can just like scoop it out with my finger and eat it because there's no egg, so I don't have to worry about salmonella. Okay. And then I'm going to mix it. I might mute myself for this because it's kind of loud. Uh. Okay, this is what it looks like right now but you have to do it so that it's kind of fluffy looking. So I usually mix it for like, I don't know, a few minutes. Most of the time I get impatient though. So I just put it on high speed and then just put it in for like a few seconds and then I'm done. Yeah, this kind of looks good to me. It's supposed to be fluffy like a cloud, but whatever, I don't have the patience for that and this is delicious anyway. Um, plus, I have to add more ingredients to this later and then mix it again. So I will be adding vanilla and maple syrup. Um, all right. I need to keep reminding myself I'm happy in the recipe so I don't forget. Um, okay. Does anyone know if vanilla expires? This vanilla does not look, it looks cloudy. Okay, let's hope I don't poison myself here. Um, yeah, what the heck? Look at this vanilla and then look at this vanilla. One of them is literally cloudy. That's so weird. Okay, I'm going to use a normal looking one. <laughs> All right. Google says when stored properly, vanilla extract will keep indefinitely, but using it within five years. Oh, this is definitely not five years old. Okay. 
that's so weird i don't know why this looks like beer or like i don't know i just won't use it i don't know what i did though because it's definitely stored properly like the lid is closed properly and everything so i just won't use that one though all right so for vanilla and maple syrup it's two teaspoons so that goes to one teaspoon And this is just the cookie base. Um, you can turn this into any cookie. I'm just making salted caramel after. Um, and then one tablespoon maple syrup, which goes to half a tablespoon. I'm just gonna use the spoon I already had. Half. Ooh. I poured too much, but whatever. I love maple syrup. All right, now I'm going to, okay, here. It's kind of hard to navigate the camera and stuff. That's what it looks like. I'm gonna beat it some more. I just taste sugar and butter and it's so good. Okay. Now we have, I made this recipe so many times that every time I doubt myself and I have to refer back to um, the written stuff. But okay, now we're gonna add like the dry ingredients, which is like the flour mixture with everything. And then, okay, I need to get a spatula. Um, okay, this works. So we have the wet ingredients right now and they're delicious. Um, but when you add the dry ingredients, you can technically still eat it and then it's like cookie dough. <laughs> I've given my friends just the cookie dough once and they thought it was delicious. So, and they didn't get poisoned, so it was good. Uh oh. All right. Now, um, don't add all the flour mixture in at once because, um, yeah, just don't do it. <laughs> it's not going to look pretty. So I'm adding it a little bit and then I'm mixing it. I'm so glad you can't see my workstation right now. It's literally such a mess. I have things everywhere. But okay, so after I mix it, it's becoming a little lighter because earlier I used brown sugar, which makes it a little darker. So that's what it, I don't know if you can see that. That's what it looks like right now. Um, and I'm gonna add more flour. Well, actually it's a flour mixture. Um, all right. This is actually really soft. Like, it looks kind of like ice cream, but it's not cold. <laughs> all right. This flavor would be a really good ice cream. I wonder if you can just freeze cookie dough and then have that be ice cream. Oh my gosh, can you actually do that? That would be delicious. Because this is like a very unique flavor. If you make this yourself in the future, this is like actually really good. I don't know how to explain it, but it's just good. All right, so now it's getting a little bit harder to mix because I added more flour. This is kind of what it looks like. So it's becoming more dough-like, I guess. I'm gonna add the remaining flour. Also, if I ever say something and then it doesn't look like I took the half of the recipe, please remind me because otherwise it's going to turn out wonky and I always forget. Okay. Now it's all kind of crumbly. Um, just remember not to over mix because it makes the cookies turn out different or something. I don't know. You just, I just know that you can't over mix. So. I don't know if you can see here. This is what it looks like. So it's a lot more like dough. And then I can take a little bit. Mm, that's so good. Yeah, I definitely recommend doing a little taste test. 
in case you find that you need to add something. Um, but also you have to control yourself and not eat the whole thing because wow, this is really good. Mm. I highly recommend making this on your own later if you're not making it right now. So today I was thinking I would split half of this and make half of it be salted caramel and then maybe half of it chocolate chip. Um, so I have my baking pan right here. Oh, I'm gonna preheat the oven right now. And it is 350 degrees F. Um, convect. Okay. I use convect bake because convect, I think it makes it so that the hot air goes through like the entire oven or something. I don't know, it just makes it faster in my opinion. So after this, um, it literally bakes so fast. I don't know how, but you literally only need to, need to put it in the oven for like 10 or 11 minutes and then check it and then it's done. So <laughs> this is a quick recipe. I just made the event one hour because I know I'm slow and then I take a lot of time explaining things and talking about stuff. So yeah, um, now make sure your hands are clean. I should wash mine. Um, yeah, so once your hands are clean, you can just like go in there and then take maybe like this size. Depends on the type of cookie you want because if you want like a thicker cookie, making it like this, this is kind of thick, it would make it chewier. But if you wanted like a crispy cookie, make it really, really thin. So I really like crispy cookies. So I am going to make it thin. So. Ah, sticking to me because I washed my hands and now my hands are wet. Okay, I don't know if you can see how thin this is, but this is what my cookie is going to look like because um, I really like them to be crispy. And this halved recipe is actually a lot. Um, every time I make these cookies, uh, my friend, she gave me this recipe and I turned it into like a salted caramel pretzel one because um, her original recipe was a chocolate chip one. So that's why I said like this dough is like the base for whatever you can make it into cookies and cream or whatever, whatever flavor you want. But my friend who gave me this recipe, she, this recipe was for like 12 cookies. But for some reason, every time I use her measurements, it turns out to be like 40 or something cookies. So I don't know, maybe my cookies are just really small. But yeah, so um, I have to this recipe too. So I think right now I sh this should make like 12. Um, just be aware um, if you if you look at this recipe and you're like, oh, I only wanna make 12 cookies. Um, just like you might end up with more. So you'll have to have the recipe. Um, at the end of this workshop, we'll find out how many, uh, how many cookies we'll end up with. So this should inform you for your future baking needs. Um, right now I have five and there's still a little bit of dough, a lot of dough left. So, and then after this, we're gonna make the caramel sauce while the cookies are baking. So that makes the most of our time. Cause I feel like when we're cooking stuff, it's usually not cooking and baking. It's usually the preparation time that takes the longest. Um, because like once you chop all the vegetables and prepare all the ingredients, all you have to do when you cook or bake is like put it all together and like heat it up or whatever. So really it's the preparation. Everything else is kind of easy. Okay. I don't know, does everybody, does anyone here have a favorite food or like a favorite baked good? Because I think mine is pie. I don't like cake as much as I do like pie. <laughs> Because I, I don't know, but I really like the crispiness of the pie and how the crust is so like, the texture of the crust does, I really like it for some reason. Um, I don't even like the filling, it's too sweet. I just like the, the crust texture. Um, and we actually have a mini apple pie workshop happening next Wednesday. Um, somebody saying soft cookies and gelato. You know what? I'm so salty because a few years ago I went to Europe and then like we went all like around the area 
And then like I went to Belgium and I didn't try the waffle because they weren't vegan. I went to Italy. I didn't try the gelato because they weren't vegan. Or like I assumed it wasn't. I'm sure there was vegan gelato somewhere, but I didn't go looking for it. And then I went to France and I didn't try the macarons and I didn't try the French onion soup. So it was kind of sad, but now I'm thinking I want to veganize these recipes. I made them myself at home. Okay, so I have 12 cookies right now. And remember, this is half of the recipe. So I have these 12 cookies. Uh oh. Okay, yeah, so I have these 12 cookies already and then this is only half. So the actual recipe is gonna be a lot more. Okay. And then I had a second baking tray here and I have just a little bit of dough left. So I'm just gonna put chocolate chips in here. Oh, that's a lot of chocolate. <laughs> All right. Does anyone have a favorite cookie flavor? I really like salted caramel, but I think in the future, I wanna make like an apple pie cookie, see if that's possible. Um, or maybe, I don't know, what other flavors? I wonder if an ice cream cookie is possible, but wouldn't that just be an ice cream sandwich? <laughs> okay, shoot, there's not enough dough for um, the second plate or pan. So hmm. I might have to take this out a little early because the cookies are really small compared to the first one that I made. I can't wait to eat these cookies later. Um, I'm gonna snack on them during the horror movie night tomorrow, tomorrow night as well. Um, ooh, macadamia nuts. <gasps> no white chocolate, what? That's the best part. What are you doing? Okay. I'm like scraping all the dough I can get off this. Once, the other day actually, I was trying like to combine weird flavors and I was like, oh, sometimes I hear about miso ice cream and stuff. So why don't I just make a strawberry and miso smoothie? So I did that and then I put, I think I scooped a lot of miso and I didn't try it beforehand to figure out how salty it was. Um, so I put too much miso and then the strawberry miso smoothie, it was good. It tasted like strawberries at first, and then the aftertaste was like a fart. So I do not recommend strawberry miso smoothies. All right, so I have 12 salted caramel cookies and five chocolate chip ones. So this is like 17-ish. Mmm, looks really good. Okay, I'm just gonna wash my hands. They're all oily now. Um, but you can see the oven's still preheating. So I finished a lot faster than expected. Um, usually with a recipe like this, it would go for a lot longer because I would have to form, I would have to shape more of the dough and then make them into cookies. Um, always a good time to clean up though, even though I hate to clean up. All right, my favorite part is just licking the, oh my gosh, this is so hard. Licking the dough off of the mixer. This is so good. Plus, I have an excuse to eat all of this mixture because it's like I'm cleaning it. Mm. Okay, I think I might start on the caramel sauce right now. Oh, this is what the cookies look like, by the way. This is the chocolate chip one. And these are just the plain ones right now, but we're gonna put caramel on top and some pretzels. Um, I have these pretzels here. I got these, this bag of pretzels from Quebec um, last year and I just never ate them. So 
now we're gonna use them. I went to Quebec for like an ex the Explore program last summer and it was really fun. And I would bake cookies for my um, host family and they loved them. And I would make little cookies and cupcakes for my friend who had a birthday. Okay, so we're done with most of the ingredients except for the sugar, vegan butter, and maple syrup because that's what we're going to use to make the caramel. So I'm not planning to you make a lot of caramel because there's only 12 cookies here. So I think I might have this recipe as well. Um, with the caramel, it's kind of tricky because um, when I first made it, I was like, I'm not a candy maker. I don't know how this works. I've never done it before. It was kind of scary, but I'll show you exactly how to do it. And like, don't be scared if it looks intimidating because it definitely does. Um, so for the caramel, it's mostly just brown sugar, regular sugar, sugar, but I use brown sugar for everything. So I'm just gonna replace regular sugar with brown sugar, um, salt and oat milk or like any plant-based milk. Um, and I guess if you're not vegan, you can literally just, Oh, where's my oat milk? Okay. Yeah, if you're not vegan, you can just use regular milk or regular caramel. I'm going to grab my oat milk. I don't know if you heard that weird screaming, uh, weird sound. Um, <laughs> it's my laundry. All right. Oh, we have a newcomer. Somebody keeps drinking my oat milk. I'm so salty. Like, what the heck? I'm the only vegan in this household, but someone keeps taking all my stuff. Okay. Hi, person who just joined. Um, just please note that I'm recording this workshop for people who are in different time zones. Um, uh, so feel free to keep your camera off and muted if you don't want to be in the recording. Where did I put my lid? Um, so I just finished the cookies. Um, I have the recipe, by the way, um, and half of the recipe makes like 17 very thin, very small cookies. So um, I'm making the caramel sauce right now as I wait for the oven to preheat because I never preheat my stuff at the very beginning. That wastes some energy because I work very slow. <laughs> so I just preheat it at the very end. So for the caramel sauce, I said earlier that we use sugar, salt, and vegan butter and some oat milk or any plant-based milk or regular milk if you're not vegan. And we're just going to use a saucepan. So I will be moving this laptop and camera over here. All right, hopefully you can... Awesome. Okay, these are the chocolate chip ones because I decided to make chocolate chip ones. And then these ones are all um, salted caramel ones, but they're plain kind of, they're plain right now. Oh. Okay, so this is my stove right here. Everything has almost preheated, which is perfect. And I use convect, convect bake because um, it just gets the hot air around better and you don't have to bake it for as long. So. And these cookies take really fast to bake. Um, it, the recipe says like 10 to 11 minutes, but I usually check it before just so that they don't burn. But I don't know, I kind of like burnt cookies. I like burnt things, I like the taste. I don't know if that's a common thing. All right. So, oh, okay, good. You still can't see my workstation. It's really messy. <laughs> um, okay, I'm assuming everybody is watching and not making alongside me, which is why it's kind of chaotic right now. <laughs> All right. So for the salted caramel recipe, you literally just add brown sugar, I'm replacing the regular sugar with the brown sugar. So just adding brown sugar, 
salt and plant-based milk and then I'm stirring it and then after that it's gonna like there's gonna be a lot of bubbles and it's kind of scary um so you'll see but just like stay calm <laughs> okay so this is the cup I used earlier because I hate washing all the different measuring stuff so I'm just reusing things um so it says it needs half a cup of sugar and I'm halving that so that should be like a quarter cup and I'm only using brown sugar um I actually didn't even know that Roger's sugar was not vegan at least not the ones in Vancouver until like two years after I went vegan um because they use like refined the refined sugar isn't vegan the, the organic one is because when you refine it, they use bone char or something weird like that. So, okay, and then one pinch of salt. So I do like half a pinch. And my vegan butter is salted, so I didn't put too much salt in. And one fourth cup of unsweetened oat milk. So half that is one eighth. Okay. Um, so right now I'm just going to put it on my stove and set it to, okay, I'll use the big one, so low, kind of. Okay, and then we just kind of wait until the sugar is dissolved, and then, like, after it's on here, oh, that's the, okay, I'm going to put the cookies in the oven now. Well, maybe wearing a sweater for this was a mistake. I'm sweating. All right. So I'll set a timer for 11 minutes. No, 10 minutes. And I'll check on it and put it in if it needs more. Uh, right now, I'm just making the caramel. And yeah, I'm going to try to like move it. So. Yeah, OK. This is what it looks like. Um, okay. But basically nothing's happening. It's just like the sugar dissolving into the oat milk right now. So you just gotta wait a little bit until it gets really intense. And when it does, hopefully I won't panic because I made this a bunch of times. I'll show you what I mean because it'll start bubbling and everything. So, but that's normal. So you have to like kind of stir it for like five to 10 minutes, which is why I start this when I put the cookies in and why I do it like kind of at the same time. Because when the cookies are done, the caramel sauce will be done at the same time. So then I can just do it right away. Right. right now it's kind of like a liquid. And when we're done with this, it's gonna be like a thick caramel sauce. So I'm just kind of waiting right now. And I'm gonna add vegan butter to this after I remove it from the heat when it's all done. Um, and that adds like a salted caramel. All right, it's still kind of just like dissolved sugar right now. It's very liquid, kind of looks like brown water. Doesn't look super appetizing, but it will. So uh, I'm gonna turn up the heat now because all of the sugar is dissolved. So I'm turning the heat up to medium high-ish. Okay, I'm actually kind of glad now that I don't think anybody is making this alongside me because the first time, I'm assuming it's the first time for you all, um, that the first time you make this caramel sauce, it's really <laughs> kind of scary. Like, It'll bubble up in just a second. I'm just waiting for it to. Um, but yeah, you'll want to stir it constantly so it doesn't burn. I don't know if you can see. I'm gonna try to like, okay, I'll remove my keyboard because I have a Microsoft Surface. Um, okay, yeah, this is what I mean. Can you see how it's bubbling? Yeah, and then it bubbles up like, Sometimes if you have a lot of caramel, it'll go all the way up and it's really scary. Yeah. That's what it looks like. See all the bubbles? You just wanna like keep stirring it. Yeah. That's too loud, I just 
just hope the smoke alarm doesn't go off. No, that's my grandpa. Okay. Oh, it's really hard to do this one-handed. Oh my gosh, I wish we were in person. And I hope I do not drop anything into my caramel. Okay, hold on. I'll change hands. There we go. That's much easier. All right, you can see how that looks. So that's how it's supposed to look. It's just bubbling up a little bit. You kind of just stir it. Um, I just stop stirring whenever I want to. But the more you have it like this, the thicker the caramel will be. You can feel kind of like a consistency. Like right now, before I was when I was stirring it, it was kind of really smooth. But right now, when I'm stirring it, it's just some kind of like I can feel the consistency. Here, let me just put this down. So I'm gonna turn this off. And then I'm gonna remove it from the heat. And all the bubbles are gone. And now it's so like, it's just a little bit of sauce. Yes. Yeah, so it looks like. It's a lot more, it has a lot more consistency than before, but as it cools down, it'll um, become thicker. So now I'm going to add my vegan butter. We're only gonna add like that much. I put it in here. And then the heat from the caramel sauce will make it dissolve. I think in the recipe it says one tablespoon. So I put way less than that. Like I did half the recipe. This actually looks so good. It's like here. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> this is like a workout for me, like baking and holding this tablet at the same time. It'll be much easier for you all when you make it because you don't have to hold the tablet. So that's what it looks like. And there's a lot more consistency than before because it no longer looks like I'm just stirring water. Plus it has a more rich brown caramel look. If you make it with regular sugar instead of brown sugar or like a mixture of regular sugar and brown sugar, it'll be a lot lighter. But I just did brown sugar. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, it looks so good. All right, and then we're going to use this to glue the pretzels onto the cookies. And then we're also going to use it to um, drizzle on top of the cookies. But when I first started making these cookies, I had caramel filling inside. So like there were a lot of steps involved. It was very complicated. <laughs> um, so I won't do that to you all. You can make the easy version. Plus the filling did not even look good anyway. Because it was just like the filling was inside, but you couldn't really like it's it wasn't it didn't ooze out or anything. So <laughs> it was literally just all that effort for nothing because you can't really taste it. Um, that's why I'm putting the caramel on top instead. Okay, maybe this is you can see that right? Yeah. See now it's as it cools down, it's looking a lot more like actual caramel. Yeah, and it's all vegan and all sugar. So okay, let me see if I can move the camera so that it's easier. All right, there we go. See, I'm literally so obsessed with how this looks. Okay. Um, so there's like two, three-ish, around three minutes before the cookies are done. Um, usually I just clean up, but I think I might do that later, so. Um, I don't know. I asked a few questions earlier, but, uh, so feel free to put anything in the chat. What is everybody's favorite cookie flavor? Someone said macadamia nuts earlier, but without the white chocolate, which is like, that's the best part. Why would you do that to yourself? It's like having wait, peanut butter and jelly without the peanut butter and jelly. So it's just bread. <laughs> okay. This is like really thickening up. It's like, I don't know. See? Wow. 
if you don't want it to be this thick, you can always add some more like almond milk or oat milk into it. Um, or you can just not put it on the heat and let it boil for as long as I did. So macadamia nuts and regular chocolate chips. That's, I've never had that before. I'll have to try it. Okay, I'm just gonna check in on my cookies. Okay, and I made them super thin, so because I like them really crispy. But if you want to make them a little thicker and chewier, you might have to put them in longer than I did, because um, mine are already kind of browning at the edges, and it's only been around ten minutes. And I'm pretty sure this recipe can, yeah, it can definitely be made not vegan, you would just replace the vegan butter with real butter and then um, the oat milk with regular milk. But I've never tried it with regular milk. When I made this recipe, I always made it vegan. So if you are planning to make it non-vegan, then just test it out and let me know how it goes. Wow, this caramel is literally so good. I don't, I don't know if you can see. Wow. This is like ASMR, but for the eyes. So I guess that's just called aesthetic. Okay, maybe I made this too thick. I'm like actually kind of worried. Okay. Wow. See, as it cools, it just gets thicker and thicker. So if you're like, oh, this caramel sauce is too thin after you take it off the heat, I'm gonna heat it up again. So. Yeah. Okay, somebody's asking, I'm wondering you have, if you have a recipe for nanomi bars. Ooh, I actually don't. But I think if you search online, there's a lot of, I don't know if you're asking for the vegan version or the like the regular version. There's definitely a lot of recipes for both. Um, although I've veganized a bunch of recipes before and tried out some myself and it's always fun. Oh, okay. I think that was my timer. I'm just gonna check. Okay. I'm gonna do the little toothpick check. Because I only put it in for 10 minutes and it's supposed to be like 10 to 11 minutes, but I just wanted to check on it. Okay. So the toothpick came out clean ish but even if it's underbaked it's like whatever it's all vegan ingredients so it's not like you're gonna get salmonella because there's no egg so i'm going to take out the cookies and i think this is something important to remember because i forgot this and um i always burnt my cookies so when you take them out the cookies are still kind of hot so they still continue to bake um so I'm just going to take them out right now. Oh, hello. I made chocolate chip cookies and salted camera. OK. They're just like really hot right now, and they're still baking. So I'm going to see if I can find a cooling rack. They're all brown around the edges, and they look so good. OK. All right, found a cooling rack. I usually hate using these cooling racks because um, whenever I made the salted caramel stuff, I would just put the cookies on top and then drizzle the caramel and then the caramel stuff would like come up, like fall through <laughs> the holes and it was very frustrating. Um, all right. The chocolate chip cookies are basically done. You, if you made it into chocolate chip cookies, like you're good to go. Don't need to do anything. But for the caramel, I'm going to put them on a cooling rack. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to burn myself because the silicone thing I use is still pretty hot. Okay. Actually, I'll just use my sleeves. A perk of wearing a sweater.
All right. Ooh, I'll show you what they look like. Some of them have holes from when I poked into it with a toothpick. Um, all right, I'm just gonna move all my stuff. I'm sure you will all have much cleaner uh, stations, workstations than I do. So, okay, I'm gonna take my pretzels now. And to put them on these cookies, usually you wait until the cookies have cooled down, but no one has the patience for that, so I'm just gonna go. Expiration date for these. September 10th, 2019. Okay, it's okay. Expiration dates are a scam. <laughs> All right. Let me try. So good. Oh, I'll live. Okay, so I'm gonna use these one year expired pretzels. <laughs> All right. So we literally can't just put the pretzel on the cookie because it's not gonna stick. So this caramel sauce is like really thick at this point. It looks like, I don't know, like the special effects thing that they use for monsters in movies. Um, so I use this, wow. And then I stick it on next with you. Okay, I kind of regret eating the pretzel now. It's fine. I will just like take an Instagrammable photo of these and then take the pretzel out and eat the cookie. <laughs> All right. Um, so you'll want to be mindful of how much caramel you use because I don't know, you might not be as lazy as I am because I definitely do not want to make the caramel again. So. Um, I'm just mindful of the caramel I use because I also want to have caramel drizzle on top. Um, so I'm only using a little bit to glue the pretzels on. Um, if you make this recipe many times, you'll probably know what is a good amount of caramel and stuff to use, so. I'll show you what these look like when they're done. I have seven with the pretzels right now, and I think that's all I'm gonna put because I really, the rest can be plain. So I actually made like three today, the chocolate chip ones and then the pretzel ones and then the plain. Oh my goodness. <laughs> all right, this is what it looks like. This is like, Usually the caramel would not be this thick, so I can just drizzle with ease. But honestly, working with thicker caramel makes it look better because when I work with the thin caramel, sometimes it would just like go everywhere because it's like liquid. So thicker caramel, make sure it stays on the cookie. But it's such a hassle to like get it to come off the spoon. Okay. I will show everybody what it looks like when I'm like done working with this super thick caramel. Oh my goodness. It literally looks like Laffy Taffy, but without the joke. No, the joke is me because I made it too thick. Oh no. It looks really good though. All right. Do you want to hear my best joke? What do you call it when a con man secretly plots to illegally download movies? Put your guesses in the chat below. What, what do you call it when a con man secretly plots to illegally download movies? A concert? What? It's a con's piracy. I actually told this joke at my job interview because I applied for so many um, co-op jobs but I only got an interview to one that I almost didn't apply for. So thank goodness I did. And I told them that joke and they were like, they really liked jokes for some reason. And I had no experience, but since I told that joke, they were like, you're hired. And then <laughs> I did a whole year of co-op. 
So. Also, I highly recommend these cookies with ice cream and like making an ice cream sandwich with it because it's so good. Okay, what time is it? Ooh, just under an hour. Perfect. Okay. I'll show you what these cookies look like now. The lighting is not the best, but they actually look really good. Hmm, I need to showcase one. This one looks the best. Yeah. Um, they're like salted caramel, so because I put some salt in it. But if you feel like it's too sweet, because the caramel, there's a little bit of salt on it, but also a lot of sugar. What you can do is just like sprinkle like the big salt chunks. I don't know what they're called. Like, you know, you know what I mean, right? Like when you have big chunky salt bits and then you can like sprinkle them on top. But I don't have those. So I'm just gonna like sprinkle a little bit of these, the pink Himalayan salt that I have. My mom says that when you put salty things in sweet foods, it enhances the sweetness because of the contrast in the taste. And that when you put sweet stuff in salty food, it does the same. So. Yeah. I have so much caramel all over me. And then you have this last one where I literally just rubbed caramel on it, but I didn't want to put a petal on. Okay, should I try one right now or? Okay. Camera eats first. I feel like the middle is kind of chewy. The lighting here is literally so bad. Oh my gosh. All right, if you make this, please take a picture and tag SFSS underscore events because I want to see all the cookies you make. Okay, so I'll try one and let you all know what I think. I'm gonna try this one because it's like weirdly shaped and there's not much caramel. Mm. It's so good. And the dough is kind of sweet. It's a little soft in the middle. I really like the crunch of the pretzel. Um, it's like a nice contrast because the middle, the dough is really soft. The edges are kind of crispy and there's a crunch on top. But overall, it's pretty good. And they're really thin, which is what I like because I don't know, having smaller and thinner cookies makes me feel like I can eat more of them. So yeah. All right, so and that's pretty much the end of the workshop. Um, so if you do make these cookies, you have the recipe now. So please, please take SFSS underscore events on Instagram um, or just like email me at vpstudentlife at sfss.ca. Because I really want to see your creations and um, see what you think of these cookies and how they taste. Mm. They're so good. I wish this was in person because I could just give you all these cookies and you can try them because they're so good. Okay, I'm going to stop recording now.